Oh, yeah. I was just pissing in a bottle in here. Get out of the brakes! Oh, hey, hi, and uh, welcome to the channel. That's right, it's the channel. My name's Tony Pitts, and welcome to um, Baby You Can Drive My Car. Now, uh, what's the inspiration behind Baby You Can Drive My Car? I can hear you asking. Well, what I thought was, just the other day, uh, what the world needs is more car content. Specifically, car can content created by six-year-old Lexus who dress like teenagers and wear sunglasses indoors. The conceit of uh, my little show is that each week I take two of my little celebrity friends, a vehicle that I think captures their essential nature, personifies them, or at least how I perceive them. So uh, sit back, relax, have a jam sandwich and enjoy. Now, I'm on my way now to my Porsche partner, Crifford's in Surrey. And then what follows is my review of a 993 Porsche 911, last of the air-cooled Porsche 911s in the, some would say, the finest iteration, the 911. Unfortunately, uh, somebody who we're calling an idiot, that's right, an idiot, left the windows open of the car, thus rendering all the sound recording from that day uh, useless. At this moment, um, I spotted a 996 turbo. Look at me spotting the 996 turbo. All will become clear, like 1970s dog dirt. Uh, I finally got inside and spoke with the bearded Begali Michael. So, uh, Michael, yeah. what's this? So this is your Boxster anniversary, That's right. limited edition. The modern cars are superb and I'm not knocking them, I absolutely love them, but you don't get the same visceral thrills. And even this, which I'd have been scornful about, is an amazing, amazing drive. Right, so this is your 2003 911 Carrera 4S. This is my Coupe two, manual. This is my 2004. Oh, 2004 C4 even. C4S. Should do that again. Coupe <laughs> manual. No, don't do it again. It's, it's good that you've... Uh, Looks like I know. Natural. That's right, that's absolutely right. So it's a 2004 C4S, manual six speed, 315 brake horsepower, again in GT Silver. Moving on to my uh, favourite car, probably of all time, actually. Drive's got what we got, Michael? So 2007 Mark 1 997 GT3 3.6. This was owned by Alan White, Oasis's drummer. Naturally aspirated, 450. 15 brake horsepower, least, something yeah. around there, something around 420 maybe brake horsepower, but naturally aspirated. So all the power's up the top end, it revs out to 9,000, yep. yeah, 9,000 it revs out to. So this car in third gear, full chat, is absolutely glorious, absolutely glorious. It's a driver's car, there's something to get hold of. I'm sure the 3.8s uh, and the 4 litres might offer you a bit more. Not my standard of driving, they don't. I'm not, a, I'm not a professional racing driver. So they're my three cars at Cridford's. I suspect we might have further content to be shooting at Cridford's over the coming episodes. So after that shaky start to the channel, that's right, it's a channel, I'm looking for things that we can have broad agreement on, and there's three things we can agree on. One, uh, we've had a good look at Cridford's. Two, I've been lucky with the cars I've got, and three, uh, Michael's got a beard like a wasp nest. That's right. So uh, here we are on the way to my first guest. Let's call him my first guest. My darling friend. Jim! Jim Moyer! Here behind the skin. <laughs> Come and join me, Jim Moyer. Hi. Hi. What's that, Jim? That's an Austin J van. That's right. And, yeah. Is uh, it Austin or Morris? Because they look the same. Go on, do you want to jump in? Oh, and look at this. Here's the driver's seat. And are you sitting in it? <laughs> yeah. You have to sit slightly back because you're not as important no, as me. No, that's because. No, no, no. That's because I'm the commander. Oh, look at this. So I, can, I am. I tell you what, it's tighter than I thought. A backseat driver. Jim's uh, first love wasn't painting or acting or comedy 
or any of the things that he's known for. His actual uh, dream, uh, and a dream that he realised, was uh, always to deliver uh, eggs or vegetables in the Kent area. Indeed, in his uh, early life, he uh, won uh, Kent Delivery Boy of the Year for four years running. And this is uh, a chance for Jim to relive his dream. Go on, Jim. Here. <laughs> right, here we right, go. Here we go. On the open road. So, is this uh, your dream? Is it? Is it as you thought it would be, or is it mildly anxiety-inducing? Uh, you know. Oh, f you know. <laughs> Do you know when? Get out the brakes. They don't work. Go on. Go on, you bastard! Right, go on, step forward. This is, um, the, you know, like if you imagine it's 1962. Yeah, I'd be your um, Chucky Lump boy when I'd be the um, delivery boy. Man. Don't you want to turn it? In a few years' time, you'll be in my position. Aye, all right, all right. Yes, you'll be uh, in the authoritative position of the driver of this magnificent vehicle. Fuck you now. Danger! It's quite a loud, uh, a noisy bit. Well, the engine's right here, isn't yeah, it? That's right, yeah. There's not, not much sound to it. You can't it. have much of a chin back in here. No, oh, that's right. While you're delivering your act. I'll be honest with you, I'm only talking out of nerves. <laughs> i tell you what, it's, uh, it's not like driving a modern car. No. Surprisingly. Well, for 1948, this, so 80 years old. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, really, isn't it? Because look at the give on that. I mean, yeah. you'd be a nervous wreck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Delivering eggs in this. Yeah. <laughs> there, there won't be much left of them. I've heard that the, if you go around the corner too quick, they will fall off. Yeah, well, let's not do that. What? Hey, hey, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Back on Hitler Field. Right, well, well, that's the test that's drive the, of the uh, yeah. new Morris commercial. I think it's passed the test. <laughs> I think absolutely. I introduced Jim to a JE, which is the electric prototype of the J-Van. Uh, it's about to uh, be released for sale to the public. Imagine his delight uh, and my relief at not having to get back into that death trap. Whoa, we're moving, Jim. Go on. <laughs> it's like a golf buggy. There's something about these uh, silent electric cars. I think I'd, I'd rather have noise here. I'd yeah, 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 yeah. So Just I had, something. Uh, I, well, I had one. I had uh, a Porsche and it had uh, engine noise. And uh, it gives you, uh, it gave me a sense of speed that you, yeah. otherwise there's nothing to really judge it by. Well, my first impression is, it's a, it is a, that windscreen's a long way off. Yes. And it's, yeah, almost, almost in another county. Now this is a lot easier. Yeah. This, um, well, well, look, look at the, look at the difference in my demeanour. It's the other end of the stick, this, isn't yeah, it? Completely. Yeah. Right, get it straightened up and give it a little blip. Let's see what it's. Go on, go on. Oh, aye. Go on, Jim. Ah, <laughs> yeah, it's a spaceship. <laughs> see that? Woot! It's yeah. a spaceship, isn't it? Oh, I like this. I know. I'm, I mean, to the point of thinking of getting one. This See, the amazing. thing is, yeah, because there's no gathering of momentum, it's just a switch, isn't it? You're just turning it on. Go on, open it up. Oh, I like this. I drove an electric when they first started. Yeah. But Maybe this is look. like, this is a spacecraft. You can feel the weight of it, it's got a bit of bottom, because obviously all the weight's down underneath our face. Exactly. This is this prototype's heavy, but yes. it's, um, it's, it handles really nicely. Yeah. Unlike the original, you can say, you look, how, how many years is Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. Percentage-wise, your chances of getting back home alive in this are probably 50% higher. I would think the, maybe more, you know, I would yeah, think maybe about 90 like, like 99 percent higher. I think it's great. Yeah, so do I. Absolutely. Are you sold on it? Yeah, beautiful, I am, yeah, seriously. Jim. Ah. Uh, well, oh. both, both of them put a smile on my face. Yeah. 
but yeah. this one, I think more. What put a smile on my face is that is when it took off. Yes. And it sounds like yes. you're in something from Star Trek. Yeah, and I, th I think you made some beautiful observations in there. I just want to reiterate them. Jim's observations were, that would be a perfect vehicle for craft work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you and go and spend the afternoon with a train killer. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the tank range, yeah, I thought I would. What's he going to drive? Uh, I don't know, we'll have to find out when we get there. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine, but yeah. thank you. No. Thank you for the offer. No. Thank you. Thank you for I'm, the experience. Listen, I'm glad I've been able to make your dream come true. Yeah. Now, what I do want is one of these. It's Just through this, the whole new dream started. The whole new thing, yeah. But Jim, this one's in reach. This one is in reach. in reach, and I do live in the future. I do live in the future. Well, hey, Tony, I'm in an area where there's a, a drill going off and I'm surrounded by military vehicles. I'm in uh, Northamptonshire countryside, Northamptonshire countryside, uh, a tank experience called Tanks A Lot, that's right. And I'm here to meet a friend of mine uh, who's built differently from uh, me and you and 99.9% .9 of the people you'll ever meet in your life. So let's see if we can find him, shall we, boys and girls? Billy! Bill! 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 Here it is, look. Hello, mate. Hello. How are you doing? Bit of a drive. Yeah, I was just doing a bit of maintenance yeah. on my van. It'll uh, it'll beat out. Well, yeah, we'll sort it. Right then, boys and girls, this is uh, my friend Billy Billingham. Billy joined the army in 1983. Correct. And the Paris in 1991 as a mounted troop specialist. SAS in 91. SAS, I do apologise. <sighs> Uh, Gods of pieces. SAS Special has been responsible for planning and executing strategic operations and training at the highest levels in numerous locations. Billy is a certified SF and counter terrorist sniper instructor, advanced evasive driving instructor, tracking jungle warfare navigation instructor, demolition sabotage instructor, ski mountaineering, rock climbing, abseiling, ice climbing instructor, combat survival RTI instructor, counter terrorist instructor all options. Well, he's a man achievement, so am I. I just thought it'd be worth saying for the record, I was on Emmerdale Farm for 11 years. During those 11 years, I was uh, made into a fridge magnet that was sold extensively around the country, and I also featured in two Emmerdale Farm knitting pattern books, so cut from the same cloth, very much so, Ian Billy. Billy gave me the impression, I'm not saying he lies, far from it, I wouldn't dare, but Billy did give me the impression that he had an encyclopedic knowledge of military vehicles. All right then, Bill, so, on your left, there are Land Rovers. What type of Land Rovers are they? Uh, actually, I do know. That's a 110, I think, mate. Well, I'm not 100% sure. These here? No idea, mate. Armoured vehicle. That's all I know. Well, you don't know what it is? No idea. All right, what about these? No. No idea what it is. Not a clue. This thing here? Uh, it looks like half a tank to me, but I don't know what it is. I don't know. How long did you do in the services? 27, 28 years. These? Uh, not really sure. It might be a personnel carrier of some sort, but I don't really know what it's called. Right. Um, right. I don't want to... I don't be rude, obviously. But you don't seem to have any idea what anything is. I don't. But then what I do know is this. If that's behind me, it's probably friendly. Right. If it's in front of me, I'm gonna blow it up. Oh, yeah. I just smash it, yeah. It, to me, it's the enemy. I don't need to know where it is. It's in front of me, which it shouldn't be. I'll blow it up. Yeah. Well, that, that's, um, that makes perfect sense. After stumbling through the yard, uh, we did alight on a vehicle that he claimed to have a deep knowledge of. We stumbled across the ferret. Now there's an old beast, look. I know what that is, that's called a ferret. First question I want to ask is, how do you get in and out? That's a good question as well, mate. I don't know, I think you actually climb through the cupola here. I might be wrong. Or I was hoping that wasn't going to be the case. Or through the top. Here, let me show you. Right through, in through here. So you climb on and into, and I believe there's two people in here. So you love this. There's no way. Let's just say you're the Billy, driver. There's Tom. no way, mate. How are you going to yeah. get two people in there? You're in the front. And so, you're, so, so if I was a legs. driver, I'd, yeah. be, I'd be in here. Imagine being six foot six in this. No. 
I can't imagine V5 okay. foot six in there. So there's the driver. Yeah. Right, and then the guy sat behind him on this little step is the commander and the gunner. If I got in there, Bill, I think we'd have to get married. <laughs> Mate, if you got in here, we would be married. Not for long, though. No, so, no, not for, no I won't lie. Yeah, imagine having a bad day in no, here. No, I can't. I really can't. So the commander, so, so the commander is saying what? What's, what's he's giving direction which way we want to go, probably navigating. Yeah. And he's just, this guy's then just following the lead and getting you in and out of trouble. But you, you were saying that you can spend 24 hours in one of these. Oh, yeah. If you're sort of on standby or on operations, in you'll be living full in full body armour. Yeah, possibly. Some. Yeah. And uh, with a big sign on you saying, shoot Hit bullets. me. Yeah, hit me. Yeah. Uh, Bullet there'd be, stops here. there would be no time, I think, that I won't be on the verge of tears. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I'm on the verge of tears talking about it. Mate. You should come in and have a look. Uh, right, well, go on. I'll have a come go. Come in. Down the back. <laughs> oh, mate. Check this out. Now, We've actually got live ammunition in here. <laughs> So your foot's going to go down here to your right, Tony, to my right. There's one foot. Yeah. And the other one's down here somewhere. Where are we going? Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Live oh, ammunition. Wow. That's nine millimetre. That ain't going to do a lot. All of seriousness, just, sit, just even sitting like this in civvies yeah. for more than half an hour. Um, imagine it. No, really. I can't. It's horrible, isn't it? You'll be talking to me. Yeah. I won't be hearing you because I've got this fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a mo Oh, there you go. Hear yeah. me now. Yeah. So, so this is, I don't know really naive, but yeah. how do you navigate your way around in one of these? Because I can well, see you, nothing. You, you'll be, you know, I'll be like, I'll just be through this. You've got a spotlight for night if you want to go rabbiting. Yeah. Pim poop. Yeah. And that's it, pim poop. Pim poop. Mate, if I was, if literally, truthfully, if we're in here and we're going to stay in it, I would be pissing in a bottle in here and then tipping it out the side. Or if you want to poop, you'd be like, mate, cover your face, cover your nose, I'm going to have to do it in a bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think I prefer the Boxster. Unfortunately, having asked the question about pee and poo, I'm afraid I made my excuses and left. Billy immediately recognised another vehicle that he had some knowledge on, uh, which he was only too happy to share with me. This will climb walls with us. It's unbelievable at getting over open ground. Six wheel drive. Six wheel drive, Fixed yeah. axles. Yeah. And he it, can it's amazing what it can do. It will climb things like that. Yeah. So, um, okay, so what's so what's it's a this for then? It's a personnel carrier. This will carry armoured infantry into battle. But or, pres presumably, though, because it's got that capability of, of of climbing up the side of houses, that'll be using a. Is it used on a particular terrain? Will yeah, it be used in open open rough Sheffield? terrain. Sheffield. Chef, I wouldn't go in Sheffield in this man. Not going mean either. They'll it's burn this out. To... How many people? How many troops in there? Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know the full. I think probably about twelve maximum. Twelve. Yeah. Let me do it, Billy. I'm, uh, I'm expert. Trained. You're the expert. Yeah. Oh, there you go, mate. Forty odd years and getting out of fucking theatres. <laughs> <laughs> the back door. That's right. Escape hatch. Get that car running. <laughs> okay, mate. So this is the luxury of a yeah, it is. personnel it's carrier. Relation. So you're just gonna sleep sitting up. Yeah. Right, same thing in here, right? If you need to go, you need yeah. to go, and everybody else has got to. Turn a blind eye. And then the other thing that immediately strikes me is you've got no, in here, I mean, I'm quite claustrophobic, but that's a different thing. You've got absolutely no, well, I've got no sense of where we are. Oh, no, mate, you you, you're just, you're cocooned. You're just locked in here. You're bouncing around. You have no idea what's going on outside. Yeah. And all you're waiting for is that door to open. And who's, and so who's giving you instruction in here? Whoever's, the commander. Who's, yeah. Commanders, and he's so, not driving? No, so the driver is a driver, and he's there purely to drive. Right, commander gets, uh, gets is shot. Yeah, then, then somebody in the back here, you'll have what you call a second in command. Right. He'd immediately take over. Yeah. yeah. You know, we'd always prepare for it. And then the third command, somebody will, t this next senior person will take over, whatever it may be. I mean, if this got hit, he's shot, the first thing we're going to do is stop this vehicle and get the fuck out of it. So I just had the sense of the reality of it. Yeah, it's it's daunting, mate. The only reassuring thing around you is you're in the same boat as me. I yeah, know you've yeah, got my yeah. back. So, I know he's yeah. got my back. Every single one of us have got fear, but I'm not going to show it to you. No. If you're in on your own, you're probably going, oh, Jesus. Have you, have you been in this situation where somebody has lost it? And no. no. But you can read behind people. You know, you can see their foot. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. their foot. 
you know, every Saturday going, oh, I wonder if I'm going to get out of this. I wonder if, yeah. you know. But, it's, but you, it's never said. No, nah, it's never said. But you can, we're all doing the same. But then you look at each other and somebody will fart and make a yeah, joke yeah. out of it. Yeah, that, that'd be that breaks, yeah. Trust me, that'd yeah, be, yeah. it'd be all farty. Do you talk about the day? Do you say, fucking hell, that was a... Yeah, that was you, a, you never go in depth for it. No, you, you just go. No. That was a close one. Yeah, and, and then, then and then you in your own little space, you probably talk yourself through it. That is the problem. That's why I believe me is we've got the problems we have, of the mental illness side, and because we don't get it out. No. And at the end of the day, you know, it's everybody's different. Yes. But I do believe that that just getting that off your chest. Yes. With your friends. With your that, mates. Yeah. Who's been in the same. Yeah. Not, yes, it's the people who shared. That t time with you, because that's what care you care about is what does Tony yeah. think yeah, about no, exactly, me? He was there next to me, not what the wider world yeah. think of me. Yeah, what does Tony think? He yeah, was yeah. with me in that vehicle. After yeah. a while, there it became uh, rather too clear to me what we were actually talking about. I could sense uh, a depression coming over, so I immediately suggested to Billy he chase me. And the challenge is this: I'm going to get in this, and uh, Billy's going to pursue me. In that, it's his belief that he can get past me on one lap. Uh, difficult to believe. If he does for any reason, it'll be down to the uh, available cars rather than any deficiency in my driving. So, yeah, uh, get ready for the insurgency challenge. Come on, let's have it. One thing, uh, <laughs> one thing I can say about myself that's positive, Billy, is I don't mind losing to the better man. And I've rarely, if ever, experienced such control of a vehicle by a non-professional driver. So <laughs> congratulations, Billy. Thank Great you. stuff, mate. Well done. Thank you. Very well much. deserved. So um, that sees the end of uh, an action-packed two days, in which. Uh, Vic Reeves and I have uh, time travelled back to a more innocent time, a kinder time, a gentler time. Uh, and Billy and I have uh, brushed our monstrous egos up against each other and I've not been smacked all day. So I'd say that's been a successful day. I'm leaving you now with two thoughts. One is join us again on uh, Baby You Can Drive My Car. And two is if anybody knows of an eminent or even available hemorrhoid surgeon, I'd be very happy to take the details. That's right. <laughs>